Hello, and welcome to the Millennial Nutritionist Podcast. I'm Isla Garcia, Master's Degree of Nutrition Science and Registered Dietitian, and I'm going to make weight loss realistic, sustainable, and uncomplicated for your busy lifestyle. On this podcast, me and my team of registered dietitians will decipher the latest nutrition research, dissect fad diets, and discuss social media trends for you so you can feel confident knowing what to eat to achieve your health goals. Research suggests that most weight loss programs aren't successful, but my experience has taught me that this is not because the participants aren't committed. It's because those diets are designed by non-nutrition professionals and center around severe restrictions. We are here to provide the facts about the science of weight loss so you can have the success you want and continue living your best life. Welcome back to the Millennial Nutritionist Podcast. It is Isla, your CEO, founder, and host of this wonderful podcast. And today I have Coach Hannah with me. We're going to talk about some postpartum nutrition topics and questions. So thank you so much for joining us today, Hannah. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited for this topic. Yeah, I mean, too, because I always like kind of skirt around the issue. I never really know how to answer these questions. So I'm excited just to kind of like you do the talking today on it. Um, But first, do you have any life updates or any like meals or foods that you're loving recently or anything like that? Or is everything just kind of going the same? Um, I will say that I have a new like snack. Okay. Um, I've been, which I think we talked about this last time and a little bit of like a cooking rut. I'm like, just not, I don't know. I have like an aversion to like food or something. I don't know. I'm just like not feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> I found this, um, like these like almond butter, these prepared almond butter overnight oats at Trader Joe's the other day. And they're so good. They have like 12 to 15 grams of protein and I've just been adding like fruit and like nuts to it. And that's been my snack almost every day uh, this week. So, oh, is that the ones that are in like the oval-y containers? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the oval and it's like um, in the refrigerated, refrigerated section yeah. on mine, I think it was like right by the milk. Yeah. Yeah. I've had those before. Those are really good. I was in like a phase last year where I see those like mush containers, which maybe I'll get back into eating them. And I think that's like Trader Joe's brand of like that type of overnight oats situation. Yeah. Um, I was a little skeptical. Um, the texture was different, uh, <laughs> but when I, <laughs> when I added like fruit and nuts to it, it gave it a little bit more crunch. So that was fine. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. See, I love that texture. I love like soggy foods. I think I've, (laughs) because I love like tiramisu. I love like tres leches. I love like uh, arroz con leche, like anything that's like soupy, sweet. That's my thing. So I love that texture. (laughs) I can see really liking it. I needed a little bit of a a Uh, crunch. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I have recently been loving and I brought it. I always mean to show stuff on here since we have YouTube people too. Um, I've been like this week really into like caprese salads. Um, I think like by the end of the summer, I'm just like always wanting like really cool foods. Um, and I'm not a big dinner person. Um, I just like make dinner for myself because my husband eats at work most of the time. So I don't ever want to make like a huge dinner. And so I've been trying to find more like snacking dinner things. And um, I remember Caprice salad. And then of course I went to Central Market. Did you ever go to Central Market? Was that a thing when you lived in Texas? I've like heard of it. I don't know if I've been. Oh, really? So it's like H-E-B's Everybody keeps saying it's HEB's like bougie or cousin. Like it's like uh like okay. fancy, but it's H E B brand, but it's like uh like North Carolina reminds me a lot of um uh what's that grocery store there that's like all like artisanal fresh market. Fresh market, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but then they, H-E-B. <laughs> yeah, but they have H E B's store brands, so they're still like cheaper brands, but then they have these things. So they because I've been on a caprese kick, um, they had like sampling these like roasted tomatoes and then they put like a uh, mozzarella on top and so this is what I've been kind of doing for dinner which is a good idea if you're not a big dinner person you get a vegetable in you get a little bit of protein in so we don't always have to just be like I think always into the super healthy foods because I'm not personally a fan of like super health foods like tons of like chia pudding or like uh tons of like protein supplement and things I love like normal food so it's fun when that kind of works out where you can get a vegetable in and it's just like a normal food and they're so, they're pre-roasted? Yeah, I guess they're pre-roasted and um, they just yeah. serve them cold. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Roasted red tomatoes. Yeah. But that sounds delicious. I know. And I'm kind of fancy and you get a vegetable in. <laughs> um, what about your clients? So you are a newer coach and we kind of got you loaded up with some clients. Everybody doing good or any fun victories to share that anybody's already um benefiting from or anything like that? 
Yeah, um, not like one specific mm -hmm. uh, client, but several of my clients right now um, came to the program eating below their calorie mm -hmm. bracket. And I always think those types of people are so much fun to work with because it's just different teaching people to like bulk up their meals, yeah. or shifting to like lower calories. Mm -hmm. And they're always so surprised that, you know, we're telling them, no, eat more. Like you can eat more because yeah. people associate weight loss with like not eating and eating less. And so it's really excited, exciting for me to see how excited they get because they're like, able to eat more and then they see like higher energy levels and then you know last week somebody was like oh I'm able to lift like heavier weights and it's, it's just really fun yeah I think it's so awesome to like just see and other people how everything really has to work together so when I get clients like that they think too that like weight loss is supposed to be so hard and they're supposed to be hungry and like it's supposed to feel bad because it's worth this result or it's like really it's not everything's really supposed to work together when you eat the right, the right amount of food, like enough food, you also have more energy to build more muscle mass. You have more energy to get through your day, which is why it's supposed to have, it's supposed to feel. There's just like all these crazy people that have created like crazy programs to make you think opposite. Yeah. So that's awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's been exciting. Um, so the article that I found for us today, it's something that I just like wanted to work into somebody's um, podcast episode and it's about the Choco Taco and how it is done. I was like ignoring this news for a while, but then they put it on the New Yorker and I think even like Bon Appetit covered it. So I was like, I feel like we got to cover it too. Somehow um, I've never actually eaten a Choco Taco. I think it's like ice cream, right? You said you'd never eaten it before either. I'd never even heard of it until like somebody sent me an article a couple of weeks before you sent me that article. Oh, really? It does. It looks like a taco, but with ice cream in it. But then like the taco shell kind of looks like a waffle cone to me. Yeah. That's what I assume it is. Like ice cream taco, like ice cream sandwich. But taco. <laughs> Yeah, that was definitely not my like ice cream junky food of choice when I was little. Like when the ice cream truck would come by, I think I'd always do like the Flintstones things or whatever. They had like oh, a gumball the on the bottom. Yeah, the push ups too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were good. Um, I think I remember these being on there, but I don't think I ever ate them. Um, but I just wanted to like bring up the opportunity to talk about what, like, are there any foods that you ate when you were younger that were like kind of not super nutrient dense or like junk foods, or did you just come from like a super healthy family that never did that stuff? No, I mean, I wouldn't say like a super unhealthy family, but I wouldn't say like healthy either. Yeah. Um, I do remember like the ice cream trucks now that you mentioned and like the Flintstone, like, fresh yeah. they were, like and what looks like a toilet paper roll. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had to pull my sisters for, for this question though. Cause I was like, I can't remember. Um, and what we came up with was the Trix yogurt. Do you remember those? Oh, they kind of like had the commercials and the like, rabbit came on and it was like tricks are for kids. And it was like a little yogurt and I, they always had like two different flavors on it and it would be like green and purple or like pink and orange. And it was like a swirl and just weird, weird flavors. <laughs> And do you think your family thought that was like healthy for you to eat or was that just like considered a pudding like dessert? That's a really good question. I should actually <laughs> ask my mom that if she thought like, because it was technically yogurt, it was yeah. healthy, but I, I would be very curious because I would imagine it was not very healthy. <laughs> yeah. Cause yogurt, I think is one of those things where a lot of people think that it was just like automatically healthy, whatever it is. Cause I grew up eating a lot of the yogurt that like you put like M&Ms in. <laughs> I don't yes. know what. <laughs> Or like Oreos in, which so, so with the like at the top and yeah, like at the top. <laughs> yeah, we had yeah. Um, which I don't know if my family thought that was healthy either, and that's why they fed it to us. Um, but we were a big like little Debbie family, like all of the little like the little Swiss rolls. We'd have like tons and tons of the oatmeal cream pies and all that stuff. I'm sure with like all of the um, uh, what's the fat, the trans fat in it that like now oh. is not allowed to be in anything because it's like super bad for you. Um, but that's, I think what, yeah, we used to eat what other junk food did we kind of eat growing up? Um, I think those are like the first ones that come to mind to me too, but the article talks about how, like, I guess a lot of these foods like come or go. I'm not really sure why. Um, I guess because they just get, um, like from a business standpoint, they probably just like don't sell anymore or anything like that, but bringing it back to nutrition, like what, like, do you feel like there is a place in anybody's like diet diet like being defined by just like what you eat day to day like whatever you like your eating pattern I guess um do you feel like there is a place for these foods to be in there yeah totally I do um I think we talked about this like a little bit last time mm -hmm. I mean these types of foods 
they may not be like super packed with nutrients, but there's a lot more to eating than just nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of nostalgia that comes with it. Like we just had a great conversation about childhood, like eating memories and those things are cool. Um, so I think what I like to tell people to do is to incorporate snacks, like those types of treats, like with a meal. Mm -hmm. Um, so for example, if you're like, you know, if it's a cookie, if your thing's like a cookie, uh, then maybe add it to like the side of a full meal. That way you're like hitting that craving, but you're filling up on the meal itself. You're getting the nutrients from the meal itself rather than, you know, eating like five cookies and like, that's what's filling you up. Um, so this way, you know, you satisfy the craving, but you're also getting good nutrition with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like, it's not like that is like your meal. And then like, you're all, then that way, like you're not, not filling up because these meals, these like foods aren't really high in fiber. That's tend to be why they're not the best for weight loss. So it's not going to fill you up for the amount of calories it is, but you're saying like, still make sure you're getting the nutrition you need. That's going to fill you up and help you to have protein, help you to have vitamins and nutrients. And then like, also you can still work this into your, uh, what you're eating. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Do you love our realistic approach on nutrition, but want to dive a little bit deeper? Let me tell you about the Millennial Living Membership Program. This was designed to help you stay motivated and inspired no matter what health journey you're on. We develop monthly nutrition and fitness challenges with prizes you can win if you stick with it to help motivate you through every month. To inspire you, we upload weekly recipes with downloadable food lists, monthly food demos, and we can even have a registered dietitian answer your questions on nutrition and weight loss. Our members form a community with other like-minded people to help support each other on their health journey. If you are seeking a way to stay motivated throughout your health journey with our method in mind, try signing up for the Millennial Living Membership Program for the first two weeks free by signing up on our website at themillennialnutritionist.com. Like with kids, so you would know this better than me because I don't have a child. Like, what is the protocol on that these days? Or like, what do you do? Or what's like recommended for like, not like making sure that they don't become like too dependent on them, but also not like banning to them to the point where they think it's bad. Like, what do you think about that? This is so hard. I am a mom, but I don't work with kids. I, right. I feel like it's really tricky and it's not, it's not black and white and it's hard. Um, so what, well, first of all, there are like a lot of resources. Um, I, there's a pediatric dietitian and her like I think her Instagram platform is like kids eat in color or something oh. like that. So I would definitely recommend like going over there. Um, she has like a lot of really good information about like how to handle like this type of stuff. Um, and I do follow her and I try to like, you know, implement some of those things. But I think like the biggest thing that like I try to do, what I make available in my home is what teaches my child what is okay to eat. So mm -hmm. as adults, we're the ones that are making the grocery list. We're the ones going to the grocery store. We're the ones deciding on what to buy. We're the ones paying for it. So by us choosing what we're going to buy and us choosing like, you know, which things we're bringing into our home, that's going to tell us um, or tell our children like what is okay to eat. Um, not to say like you can't buy like a box of Oreos uh, every once in a while, you know, but like not buying like eight boxes mm -hmm. or not buying a box every single time you go, like the frequency in which mm -hmm. you buy it is going to show your kids like how often you eat it. So, you know, you have a refrigerator full of like produce. Mm -hmm. It's going to be normal for them growing up to live in a house with a refrigerator full of produce. Um, so that's like the biggest thing that like we try to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's great. Cause I'm even just thinking for myself, like what I feel like I ate growing up and how it impacted like my relationship with food now, which I feel like I have a really great relationship. I think my parents did a good job with it. Um, but I think just making sure that you don't already start those ties of like, oh, well, you're having a bad day. Let's like have five cookies and then like continue to do that over and over again or like every celebration. Cause that's a lot of times what I deal with with clients. It's like them saying, when I grew up, we always celebrated every single thing with like a dessert. And now like when, every time I want comfort, that's what I want to eat. And that can get really hard to break after a while. And I feel like I hear you kind of saying that too, with just like making sure the majority of what you're eating is like healthy, nutrient dense food. And then that shows your children, like this is what a normal eating pattern looks like, but it's also not off the table for you to eat these fun foods as well every now and then. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think like probably all of us as adults can say this, that when we restrict ourselves, we tend to crave that food even more, mm -hmm. which can lead to disordered eating, overconsumption. Mm -hmm. 
So that's also something like to keep in mind, you know, with kids, like they're going to have the same types of feelings if you like severely restrict them, regardless of what it might be. So I'm I'm trying to keep that in mind. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Great. Just like what you'd talk about with anybody else, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving into our topic today, um, all about postpartum nutrition. Um, So we haven't really covered this again, like kind of skirt around any question about it. So I'm excited to dive in today and be able to use this as a resource. And it's pretty much going to be like, you're the expert on this. So it's not going to be a two-way interview like normal. We're just going to pick your brain about what you know. And so see if we can help some people with some questions that we commonly get about this topic. So just to lay the groundwork, um, first of all, do you think it's safe or does research say it's safe to lose weight postpartum? So yes and no, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's so individualized and there are so many considerations. So throughout this podcast, I'm going to avoid blanket statements yeah. and just try to make generalizations. Yeah. Um, two weeks postpartum, no, a week, mm-hmm. or sorry, a year postpartum, sure. Yeah. Um, and when I say like no to immediately postpartum, that doesn't mean like there's nothing that we can do. There are still plenty of things that we can do like for our health, you know, two weeks after delivery or three, four weeks after delivery. Um, we can work on increasing protein. We can work on increasing produce. We can just overall learn to eat a more healthful, like balanced plate. We can incorporate exercise when that's appropriate. Um, then when, you know, if weight loss is desired later, we have a really solid foundation to work off of when we start doing a calorie deficit. We still need to like, keep in mind, like the phase of life we're in and being healthy and like recovering first. And then like working from there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. Like recovery is first. Your body just did a whole lot. There's a whole Mm -hmm. lot that you're doing. So yeah, we'll just take it slow. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything specific to consider like going forward? Do you want to say like your piece about like, okay, but if it's this special situation, like these people shouldn't listen to this or whatever. Like when I think about it, um, when it comes to like a C-section or like breastfeeding or exercise or what the expectation should be or anything like that. Is there anything special to consider when you are trying to lose weight postpartum? So I guess I'll just go through them. So yeah. from a breastfeeding standpoint, that is like not the time to like do any sort of dieting. Mm-hmm. Again, you can do like try to just generally eat more healthy. Um, but breastfeeding is not when you want to put yourself in a calorie deficit. On average, we need about 300 extra calories per day when we're breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Uh, so a like deficit or some sort of severe restriction can really, really, really disrupt your milk supply. Um, and then as far as cesarean versus vaginal delivery, I don't know a ton about like nutrition Mm -hmm. pertaining to like, you know, being individualized for nutrition. But those two things do for sure come into play with exercise. Mm. Um, So the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists says that for a healthy pregnancy and a vaginal delivery, Mm -hmm. at six weeks postpartum, you can aim for about 150 uh, minutes per week of exercise. So, you know, once you hit the six week mark and you'll be cleared by your doctor, that's a good goal to aim for. As far as like complicated pregnancies or deliveries or cesareans, that's something like you really would need to talk to your doctor about Mm -hmm. um, to see when that's okay to start and how to go about doing that. Mm -hmm. So hormones play a really big impact uh, postpartum as well. So immediately postpartum, progesterone and estrogen levels will decrease, and then you'll expect oxytocin and prolactin levels to increase. So things are going to feel a little bit wonky for a bit. Um, by about three months postpartum, those levels will start to stabilize. But if breastfeeding, you're still going to see more shifts. Uh, The most significant being around six months when milk consumption starts to decrease because baby starts uh, being introduced to solid foods. And, you know, hormone levels, we know, like, play a huge role on our, like, energy, how we're feeling. Um, that's, That's a really, that's really important consideration too. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people think that, like, they are like the same person, like before, like having a baby versus after. And I know like just from like taking basic classes that there's just like a lot of things that go on and a lot of adjustments that are made after. And so that's why I always get nervous. I'm like, yeah, I can try to help you lose weight, but I know that if you're not operating like a normal person right now, so there's got and hormones are always playing a part in weight loss and hunger levels and energy levels and all that really um, plays a huge part too. And like how you're able to lose weight. So I think that's great that you were able to kind of put all that out there before we go forward. But 
I thought we could put together maybe like the four to five biggest challenges or misconceptions that you think are out there when it comes to losing weight postpartum. Um, and I can even work into common questions that I get from clients or from like people on Instagram. Um, but why don't you take away, like, what is the first thing that comes to mind that you feel like you need to clarify or talk about when it comes to this topic? Yeah. So I went off some of the questions that you said that you mm-hmm. commonly, um, get, mm-hmm. um, and they're pretty similar to a lot of the ones that I'm getting to. So I okay. guess the first one would be schedule, which really like is a tr- is, is an issue for almost everybody mm-hmm. that um, I see, probably you too. I think that this is probably the hardest part, especially mm-hmm. for parents that are breastfeeding who can't have somebody else to help with those feeding responsibilities. There is no like, you know, one thing that I can say just because like, you know, every, you know, everybody's family dynamic is different. Like mom is different. Baby is different. There's just so many, so many factors. Um, so I guess a few things I would say is, you know, they tell you when baby sleeps for you to sleep, definitely do that. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Your energy level is super important. Um, I would also take advantage of like friends and relatives, you know, they, everybody always gets so excited when a new baby comes home. So Mm -hmm. I would definitely take advantage of them if they want to come over to see baby and maybe use that op- as an opportunity to sneak away, whether it be for a walk or a nap or oh. you know, just to prepare, prepare a meal, to sit down and have a meal by yourself un- uninterrupted, really like whatever you feel your body needs at that time. So take advantage of, you know, the people in your circle. Um, and then, you know, once you've been cleared to exercise, bringing baby along with you to the exercise is a really good idea. You know, there's a lot of mommy and me classes and even a 30 minute walk around the neighborhood with baby in a stroller is like super underrated. Like that, that's a great, great option. Um, and then a lot of people will do things like while wearing baby, like in a carrier. Mm. Um, so that's something you could do while exercising. That's something you could do like, you know, to have baby occupied to where you can still kind of keep a schedule for yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also like meal prep with baby while carrying baby, you know, of course be mindful of, you know, hot pans and ovens and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, there is a way to, you know, prepare meals while baby is still close to you. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I guess I never thought about all those things. Cause I haven't really worked with a lot of clients that have a super young baby. I've had a couple, um, and one did say, yeah, that's how she got her walks in is she would just, she found another mom in the neighborhood and they would go and walk together with their babies. Um, and ended up working out cause she, I assume just that like being, she was a stay at home mom and having a baby would cause her to like be super active throughout the day. And she's like, I'm really not. Cause my baby can't really like walk around. So I'm not like chasing them down. I'm pretty sedentary. So she had to do stuff like that. Or I did have an, also another client with an older, I think more of like a toddler, um, that she was also a stay at home mom. So she ha- struggled with getting away. And so she would just like take her uh, child to the mall and they would walk around and he would look at all the stuff in the stores and she would get her steps in. So I think that's kind of like what you're saying too, just like figuring out ways to like in, um, like have them do it together. And then I'm sure also that helps them to go ahead and create those good, like, uh, memories or routines of like being active throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you, when they get older, um, you know, gems have like daycare programs Mm -hmm. and there's like more resources, but when they're like tiny and they're feeding so frequently and you know, they're not really eligible for childcare facilities or anything like that. I think the best thing to do is try to just kind of shift your framework from, you know, the way you did things before, before Mm -hmm. baby and see how you can do those things like while having baby with you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, what about something else that you feel like, um, needs to be corrected or a common problem that we can give a solution for? People are posting all of these like elaborate things on like Instagram and, you know, we think that that's what we should be doing. So I think just like changing your expectations and trying to be more realistic is super important. Um, Lacey mentioned in a previous episode, which I really liked how she like just had to kind of realize that she just needed to do what felt right for her body and focus on feeding her body rather than like obsessing over like, you know, the perfect way to do it or like Mm -hmm. specific nutrients. And sometimes that's just, I think what you have to do with all the things you're doing, like after having a baby or, you know, during motherhood, uh, showing yourself grace is super important because you are doing so much right now. Um, so I think, you know, do the best you can feed your body, you know, the best that you can. Um, I guess a little, a little pro tip for like, you know, trying to continue with adequate nutrition, um, make a list of, um, like some of your like nourishing, like favorite meals at like Mm. restaurants or fast food places or whatever. That way, like you can quickly order something, you already have a list 
And also after, you know, you bring home a baby, usually like family and friends, like want to bring you meals and, you know, they have those like apps now for like meal trains. So that way you like already have that list in your phone and you can just like email that list out or like text it out to somebody. And like, there's already like all the things that your family like likes to eat. Oh, cool. Cool. Awesome. Okay. And yeah, I think that plays a part even in weight loss too, because, um, if somebody is like an emotional eater, which is just a a lot of what I see. Um, and you, uh, like a lot of times I see my clients overeat from emotions when they're actually just kind of like hungry. Like there are some circumstances where I'm like, okay, you know, you are not hungry. This is like actually like maybe an issue that you need to go to therapy about or something. But sometimes like emotional eating just gets combined with being super hungry. So at least if you're like baseline nourishing yourself with something throughout the day, then it's going to be better. Um, and also you don't want to under eat or you can stress your body out, which can just cause you to have more inflammation, which makes it hard to lose weight. So that's why like just eating normally throughout the day again can really help you um, so that it doesn't like all backfire. What about something else that you feel like you're seeing in your clients or you feel like you hear a lot out there that needs to be corrected? Yeah. So I think a big one is like, how do you like feed yourself and like your child, whether it's like baby or a toddler or like, I don't know, like an older child. Um, I've heard that a lot. You know, there are moms that are making like four different meals each night for whether it's like mm-hmm. for them, spouse, you know, this child and that child. Um, and that's really hard to do. And it's not super realistic or recommended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I guess starting starting from the beginning, um, I would try to like let your baby eat what you're eating as soon as like, of course, like appropriate, as soon as like solids start being introduced. And that could look like, um, you know, you have an avocado, half an avocado on your salad. So you mash the other half of the avocado for baby. That's mm-hmm. great. That could look like, you know, putting ground turkey on the tray, like when baby gets older, like, cause you had like a taco salad with ground turkey on it. Um, that's going to expose them to new foods early on, which is going to be beneficial as far as like nutrients goes and like, just really like setting lifelong habits for a good relationship, um, with food. Okay. And, um, I guess just going kind of back to like parents, like mostly moms that I've seen that are just like struggling to like figure out like what, what to cook. Cause it's, you know, it's, you you have one night and you can't make like five meals in one night. Like that's, Mm -hmm. that's crazy. Um, so for that, I use the, um, have you heard of Ellen Satter? She's the pediatric dietitian. Mm-mm. So she has the division of responsibility in feeding. Oh, um, Caroline talks. Body. I mean, Catherine talks about that sometimes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I cause she it. works with kids. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I love it. Like so much. I feel like it's like, I mean, I would venture to say it's like the golden standard for like, like pediatric feeding. Oh. Um, and her website is, um, Ellen Satter Institute.org. But basically what it is, is it's the division of responsibility and feeding. So what responsibility do I have as the parent? And then what responsibility does my child have? Mm. Um, so it's a pretty long website. So as a parent, our job is to choose the food, to prepare the food, to provide like regular meals, to provide regular snacks, to make eating times pleasant and enjoyable, um, to be considerate of our child's likes and dislikes. Uh, to, and and that might look like putting, making sure no matter what you make, you know, one thing on the meal on the plate is something that they're going to like. Um, and then the child's responsibility to, is to eat, to eat the amount they want to eat, to learn the food, to eat the food that you're making, and then just to learn how to behave at mealtime. Um, and so what that means is not making multiple meals. It means making one meal. Mm-hmm. And then your child decides to eat it. And, you know, if that meal is, I don't know, chicken, mashed potatoes and green beans, so they don't want to eat the green beans and chicken, they can just eat the mashed potatoes and that's fine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the exposure to the chicken, the exposure to the green beans, you know, three months from now, maybe they eat all three of the things. So that's oh. typically what um, I think like most people recommend when it comes to like eating with, with kids. Oh, okay. And then like, I think relating back that back to like weight loss. Um, so that's helping the mom to not have to like be so fatigued that she like only eats goldfish. Cause she, like, she doesn't yeah. want to make and yeah. then she or she, like, meal. made French fries and chicken nuggets and she's too tired to make herself something different. So she's yeah. eating French fries and fries and chicken nuggets. 
Mm. Um, which don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I love French fries and I have some chicken nuggets, but like you can't eat that every single day. Yeah. Um, so that kind of, yeah, tying it all back, that kind of allows mom to make like a balanced meal, whatever she feels like is a balanced meal for her and her family. Mm. And she has a nourishing meal and her kids have a nourishing meal and then they can decide what to eat off of that plate. And again, if that just looks like eating the mashed potatoes for like, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, maybe three weeks later, they've tried one green bean and that's progress. So <laughs> Yeah. 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 Cause I tell clients even like, um, like our taste buds change over time. Like even as adults, like, uh, if you don't like a certain food, um, it's crazy how the body can adapt. The more you eat it, the more your body's going to like adapt to like it. Something with like the gut microbiome can like change to like it. Also like your taste buds just become adjusted, all this stuff. So, um, there's really science behind it. You're not like torturing your kids. They actually will like just change how they like perceive the the taste of it after a while, which is really cool. Um, but another thing kind of off of this, I get, I don't know if you've had a client like this yet, um, that they feel like their kids eat healthier than them. Like they give their kids <laughs> fruits and vegetables, but then they're like, I don't eat it because I don't like it. And I just need to eat what my kids eat. So I think all like, I feel like all like to tie it in just like having family meals, I think is important for yourself. Weight loss. We actually, Sarah made a, a, um, a uh, blog post about this, which I don't know if you know, Sarah, she went to Meredith too, but she graduated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she just wrote a blog post about this too. And talked all about like how you can make like with older kids, how you can have them be involved in like the meal time and make the meals. And that way too, it just, it helps you to not have to waste time doing all these, like all these crazy meal things. And then you end up just eating like a Fig Newton bar for your dinner, which is not fulfilling and things like that. So um, I think those are really cool tips you gave there. What about another tip or topic that you feel like needs to be corrected or talked about? I really like that you mentioned the like mommy pooch. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, again, in a time of Instagram, like you see all these people online and it's just, you know, it's not always like realistic. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as far as like, can we make that go away or like, can like food, how, how does food like impact that? you know, some people like may never like have that, right? Like Mm -hmm. it it entirely depends on on each individual person. Other people might have like fat in the area. Other people might have, you know, minimal fat and just like loose skin, you know, which, which is totally normal. Um, All three of those are like totally normal. You know, our bodies do different things. We just like carry it a whole baby for. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I would say that with fat in the area, we can address body fat as a whole with nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's important to know, like, despite whatever you may see, like on social media, or like, whatever, there is no like one way of eating or one diet that is going to specifically target any area of the body. Mm -hmm. So like, as a whole, we can make shifts for like weight loss or fat loss. But, you know, depending on where the fat's like leaving your body, like there's, there's no way that we can like guarantee like certain spots. Mm -hmm. Um, so really just like overall, like health and wellness is probably recommended. Um, but then there's other things like loose skin and to my knowledge, I don't know of anything that you could possibly do like nutrition wise that is just going to like tighten skin. I mean, I'm sure like strength training can like help tone up some things to a certain extent. Um, but you know, I don't think nutrition can impact that. I mean, you just carried a whole baby, (laughs) your body's going to change. (laughs) I think it just goes back to setting positive goals that are beyond just weight loss, which is something that we all do. Um, And when I filmed the episode with one of the therapists that we had, um, that was one thing that that was her biggest takeaway. She said, if you're trying to lose weight in a healthy way to stay mentally healthy, you've got to kind of figure out why you want the weight loss. It's not bad or unhealthy to have weight loss as a goal, but still keeping it front of mind. Like, why do you really want that? Do you want more energy? Do you also want to feel healthier? Do you also want to be able to run around with your kids and have more stamina or be able to go on a hike? And I think that can give perspective too when things like loose skin may or may not go away. At least you can kind of be like, okay, but like I can walk around with my kids a lot more today. Or like I have more energy to get through the whole day. And then that really helps as opposed to like only focusing on like that one superficial goal, um, which is nice that a therapist kind of backs that up. But another thing that I thought about with this as well, um, we actually just record a podcast with a physical therapist that works with moms too. And she even said a lot of times too, like having that mommy pooch might be even like more of a thing you need to work with a physical therapist on because it's actually the muscles that need to heal together. So that's why it's also important to work with somebody who understands like what disciplines are involved and not everything can't just be solved with like 
just activity or just nutrition or just physical therapy. Like it really all has to work together. Cause she said with moms that she realized um, that, that weren't healing the muscles, like the muscles weren't really coming together. Um, that she would ask them like, are you eating enough protein? Because we really got to have both of these things together to heal it. So all of that, like everything really just has to work together. Um, and that sometimes it can't just be solved by nutrition, especially like, yeah, when your body's been like stretched and things like that. Yeah. So there's something called diastasis, which Mm -hmm. the actual like medical term is longer. And what that is, is so you have like the abdominal wall like this. And then when you like have pregnancy, it kind of like shifts. Mm -hmm. And so ideally it goes back like this, but Mm -hmm. sometimes it, I'm trying to like get to it again. (laughs) Sometimes it doesn't go all the way back and it, it stays, the muscles stay like this. And so that can lead to like a pooch, right? right? So like if it's just the muscles that are separating mm-hmm. on a nutrition standpoint outside of having extra protein, like there's no like fat necessarily right. that needs to be like lost. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like it's a muscular issue. And you know, right. I guess like, physical therapy would do that, or you know, I, I'm not like a personal trainer, so I don't know, but I'm maybe there's like specific ex- exercises mm-hmm. that you can do to try to like bring that back together. But yeah, that's definitely a reason that some some people have the little mommy pooch. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And hopefully that's comforting to know that like you're not doing something wrong even if you're in a calorie deficit and you don't see like this transformation because it might just not be that. I had a client who had twins bef- recently and she lost weight. She's like, I'm honestly at the weight that I was even before I was pregnant, but I don't feel like my body looks the same as it used to. And it's like, well, you know, you also had twins. That's a big, like it's yeah. a big, um, uh, stress on your body. And like your stomach is probably like a little bit more stretched out. So it will just be different. So that's why I think it's just going back to like what a healthy expectation even is for postpartum pregnancy is really important. And to get that, um, that kind of like scientific backing for what, what is normal versus like what people on Instagram say. Yeah. I do love that. Um, making goals outside of like, Oh, I need to be out my pre pregnancy Mm -hmm. weight, or I need to be in my pre pregnancy jeans or something like that. Because again, even just like what you said, even at a healthy weight, like there could be changes that, you know, like your hips could have expanded, like, Mm -hmm that, that might be just what that is now. I mean, you, you know, you had a baby or two babies or three, you know, however many, um, and the same with loose skin, like, you know, you can be like at a perfect weight, you can be very healthy with a ton of physical activity and you may still have like loose skin. Um, so I think like setting goals outside of like that would make you feel a lot better. Yes. Yes. And yeah, just tying it all back in. That's why it is just important to work with a professional because they can let you know, like, no, we can actually do something about this or no, like, I think we need to just reframe what we think about success. So you don't feel like you're going crazy because it's like an unattainable goal, whatever you're trying to do. And that's what we can really help you with too, in the most gentle way. Um, Do you feel like we covered the things that you wanted to cover? Is there anything that you feel like um, we need to get out before we wrap up? I think we, I think we did it all. Uh, the biggest one that I get again was the the mealtime thing. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm really glad that we talked about that and hopefully that helps a lot of people out there making meals for themselves and their kids. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Hannah. Uh, make sure to check us out on the video format as well on YouTube and subscribe. We're really trying to kind of expand our horizons with the, all the platforms. So it would really help us out if you subscribe and make sure to check out Hannah as a coach as well. She is taking on our um, new moms with all of these challenges that we're talking about now. And it's really helpful to be matched up with a coach who knows how to help some of these behavioral um, problems. Cause when it comes down to weight loss, kind of the science doesn't change as far as like need to be eating produce, we need to be exercising. But with all of these little um, changes in behaviors, it's helpful to work with somebody who knows how to fix it right off the bat um, and works with people day in and day out on this. So thank you so much for joining us today, Hannah. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the Millennial Nutritionist podcast. For daily weight loss tips and nutrition information, you can find us on Instagram at the.millennial.nutritionist and on TikTok at millennial.nutritionist. If you find this information helpful, please subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend who needs encouragement on their health journey. See you in the next episode.